have to feel it. You don't have to have a goose bump to know you got it. Amen. You don't have to run to know it's there. But because the word of God says you have it, you have it. Amen. You can manifest it from the inside out. There should be rivers of living water flowing out of every one of us, reaching to the uttermost parts of the world. However, whatever your ministry is, whatever you do, Satan's trying to block it every oh, single yeah. way. And it ain't going to happen. Not on this watch. Amen. Not on our watch. Amen. That's been my, my thing. Amen. Not on this watch. No matter how I feel, no matter what I'm going through, it doesn't matter because I know that I know that I know that my Redeemer lives. Amen. I know that I know that I know that I am born again. I know Praise I'm filled God. with the Spirit. When you don't know what to pray, let the Holy Ghost Amen. pray for you. That's, when, when, that's mm. when your prayers are real true, when yeah. the Holy Ghost intercedes and begins to pray. And you Amen. begin to pray in Him because He prays those things that you don't even know that you need. Amen. Some things we don't even know we need. But he knows, Amen. and we think we got to feel something. we got to feel it before we even clap our hands or stand oh, up. Yeah, well, I don't yeah. like that song. I'm not going to stand up. And pr you know, it's just like, bless me if you can, Lord. Well, that's your choice. I come in with a very heavy heart this morning, but I'm going to lift my hands, and I'm going to praise the Lord anyway, and I'm going to give the devil a black eye when I walk out the door, and I'm going to give him a black eye when I walk in the hospital, and I'm going to live my life, the rest of my life, because the day I almost died, I vowed that I would live the rest of my life speaking truth, not holding back, and telling everybody that don't go by your feelings because they're tricky. Because if you go by your feelings, you don't really know who you are in the Spirit. Know who you are in the Spirit. Rise up in that. Stir up that gift. Let it move. Let it operate. Put yourself aside and let's get some selfless going on instead of selfish. And we might manifest some kingdom of heaven right here at Liberty Ministry Outreach. Amen. Praise God. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven.
today. Amen. You'd see that your troubles and your problems would fade away if you just let him reign. There's too many people that's made Jesus their Savior but never made him Lord of their life. Hallelujah. So he doesn't reign. They have their own kingdom set up. They might be born of the Spirit, but they got their own walls built up. They live in their own kingdom. They want what they want, when they want it, and how they want it. Hallelujah. But there is another kingdom. Praise God. That's where our source is, our true source. That's where our true help is. Hallelujah. That's where he lives. Praise God. We need to tear the walls down today and start living from his provision. Hallelujah. Start possessing your land. Hallelujah. Start living in our possessions. Praise God. We already been given in Christ. Hallelujah. We're not, we're not broken. We're not missing anything. Hallelujah. Jesus paid it all. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you're born of the Spirit today, you're God-possessed. Hallelujah. From wall to wall, hallelujah, you're possessed of God today. We need to start acting like it. Hallelujah. We got power and authority. Hallelujah. Praise God. He is the first and the last. Hallelujah. He is the beginner. Hallelujah. He is the finisher. Hallelujah. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. He's Alpha and Omega. He's all that it is. He is the beginning. He is the end. And he's everything in the middle. Hallelujah. You are what you are today by the grace of God. It's in him that you live and move and have your being. Hallelujah. We need to let him reign. Hallelujah. Let him reign. Let him reign. Yeah. 
Praise God. Uh, Sister Hope. To close my eyes and just believe that you won't lead me where you don't go. When my faith gets tired and my hope seems lost, you spin me round and around and remind me of that song, the one you wrote for me, and we dance. Nice to know 
not alone I found my home here in your arms It's nice to know Not alone I found my home here in your arms It's nice to know Not alone I found my home here in your arms It's nice to know Not alone I found my home here in your arms Amen. Hallelujah. You know, it is nice to know, praise God, we're not alone. You ever been in a position in your life and you feel like you're alone and nobody around you, nobody, but if you got the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart, you always have somebody because he said he'll never forsake you. He'll never leave you. That's who he is. And I believe it, don't you? Amen. We believe what his word says. His word is truth. I'm excited about his precious word. I I just love to get in his word and study and uh, get what he wants for us to have. You know, uh, praise God for our mothers this morning. I thank Almighty God for our loving mothers, and especially the people outside this walls don't know how fortunate we are that we have Christian mothers that's come into this house and to praise in God. Amen. That is a blessing beyond blessing if your mother has taught you about Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. That is so wonderful. Uh, uh, to think about this morning, but uh, praise God. So we're going to look and see, and I want you to uh, be in prayer. I've got a message that I will be preaching on Wednesday night about paradise. Some of you is going to really enjoy that. I'm enjoying studying it and getting prepared for it. So Wednesday night, bring someone with you, be ministering on paradise. Uh, but this morning, I want to minister on what the Lord uh, uh, has. This is about the third time. I like it. Praise God. I like our, I just love our church the power of God moves in our church, and we let the Holy Ghost take over. Amen? Uh, we don't go by schedules. We go by Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise God. So whatever he wants is what we want. This morning, uh, I would like to talk to you about something this morning. It's very important as a Christian, and it's something that uh, we give hope one in another to one day because uh, Praise God of Almighty, our Almighty Lord Jesus. We have, uh, we're heirs to eternal life with Him. Amen. Now, is that not exciting this morning to, to know that you are a child of the King? Hallelujah. And uh, you have Him in your heart. Uh, hallelujah. Praise God. One day we will spend eternity with Him. One day we'll pass from this uh, uh, place and we'll be with Him for eternity. Amen. So I'm excited uh, about that this morning. So, what I want to do is look and see uh, what the Lord has for us this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. Eternal life. Let's look at it and see what God's Word says about it this morning. You know, you know to, to receive eternal life, uh, you've got to be active. You've got to continue. If you continue uh, in the Word of God and, and faith, praise God, it's a process uh, and it produce, produces results. Amen. You stay in the Lord and continue in his word and everything, you're going to reap some more rewards that we can't even imagine. You know, if God showed us all the stuff that he has for us, we couldn't even imagine it. We'd want to be going right now. Amen. If we seen what God has for us, uh, uh, praise God, and he has done for us, uh, we could, we'd, we'd, we'd want out of here. We wouldn't want to be here. But we're a part of this, praise God, and we're going to see, uh, we're going to be a part of this world one day here uh, in a sinless society, praise God, uh, that will rule and reign with the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So let's just look and see what God has for us this morning. Amen. You know, I don't know about y'all, but one time, I'll get into that this morning on some of these scriptures. Uh, I was on a destruction, a road to destruction. I was heading down that road, and boy, I was in the big wide road. I was wide open too. But I want to praise God for Almighty God and His mercy and His grace that we're in today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, because uh, I got a hold of Him, I changed uh, uh, the route that I was headed to total destruction because uh, I repented and I turned from that. And when I repented, praise God, my life changed and I got out of that uh, uh, road that I was uh, on the way uh, uh, to destruction. Let's look and see what God says in, in the book of John. We want to look uh, unto everlasting life what the word says. Labor not for the meat which perishes, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life. 
And you know, I like to emphasize what, how do you get that everlasting life? It's through God Almighty's Son, Jesus. He's the only way. And praise God, uh, I'm the way, the truth, the life. That's what he says in John uh, 14, 6. I love to quote that scripture because the only way to get to him is through our king. Amen. So let's look a little bit uh, uh, here this morning at God's word. It says right here, but uh, for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed it. Amen. You know, he is the bread of life. Think about it. You get life eternally with him. Amen. Eternal life through the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Let's get into Scripture a little bit more here that I get down to the Scripture I want to get into. He is the bread of life. We see that uh, in John 6, 47 through 51. Let's look and see here. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. i tell you right now, can you imagine? Uh, think about it. When we became a Christian and have him in our hearts, uh, in our spirit, man, hallelujah, we have everlasting life with him. Amen. We're never alone like our sister was dancing a while ago. We're going to get to dance before the king. Amen. And we're going to be with him for eternity. You know, a lot of times I think about uh, uh, sometimes, isn't, isn't, isn't it going to be exciting to get up there, man? I want to talk to Noel. I want to talk to some of those. Enoch, I want to talk to uh, uh, Paul and Thomas and, and uh, all of those, uh, Isaiah, all of them. I want to spend a little time with them. I want to talk with them. Praise God. Well, guess what? We'll have eternity, amen, to spend with our brothers and sisters is up there now. Hallelujah. So I'm excited about uh, uh, what God has in store for us. Look here, the bread of life. Uh, Jesus is uh, uh, that the bread. Look here. It says right here, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. Now, that's that uh, food that you got to have to nourish your body. If you don't uh, have uh, uh, food that nourishes your body, if you quit eating, you're going to die. Well, the same way, our Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah, uh, he's representing here the bread of life. Uh, you eat of him, uh, other words, uh, you believe in him and, and bring him in your life, hallelujah, you'll have life eternal because of it, amen? Because uh, he is that bread. Look here, your fathers did eat manna. i tell you right now, those that eat manna, uh, in the wilderness, uh, God fed them, but they're gone now, just like us. So we eat, uh, God gives us food to nourish our body, and you nourish that body with food like God wants you to, and you do it right, it'll help you, I'll tell you right now. But sometimes I get a little abusive, and I overeat and do some things I, I might or not to, and uh, look out, it can affect that body, you know. We got a little bit of responsibility there too, hadn't we, amen? But i tell you right now, if you eat the food of the bread of life we're talking about here uh, this morning, uh, his name is Jesus, hallelujah, and you'll receive a, a spiritual food that you can't imagine, then it will give you eternal life with him, amen? You'll never die because we'll be with him for eternity. Let's look and see a little bit further right here in the scripture. It says, verse 40, uh, 40, uh, 50, this is the bread which cometh down from heaven that no man eat thereof and die not. Look here. I am the living bread which come down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. That's what Jesus did for you and I. You know, think of, you ever thought about that? He came down from uh, heaven up there, and he came down in the flesh and submitted himself down here to be the sacrifice for you and I. Well, praise God, we only, uh, he is the sacrifice. We don't have to go into sacrificial laws of the old uh, Mosaic uh, Moses law and everything because we got Jesus now. Amen. Did you know Abraham uh, 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 and Isaac and Japheth, Jacob, they never was in the law. You know, Moses came along, and the law was there, and then it was abolished. Praise God. We in the new covenant. We see that uh, uh, this morning. Praise God. But I want to tell you right now, our Lord Jesus Christ, he came down. He made it possible. We in the new covenant because of him. He came down and left all of his deity up there and came down to this earth in the flesh. He was seen and heard, and they touched him. He uh, was alive, and they was with him. They put him on the cross. He died. He put him in the grave. He came out. Uh, how Hallelujah, we see this morning. He sits at the right hand of the Father interceding for you and I. Amen. And because of that, we have eternal life with the King this morning. Amen. I tell you right now, we got a benefit package that you can't imagine. 
the benefits we have with our king is just unimaginable. Look at here. Let's look at uh, a little bit further right here uh, and look in John 4. You know, we're supposed to win some souls. You know, I was praying this morning when I come in uh, that the Lord would help us to come up with a, a good program. We got the internet here. That uh, gospel is going, the good news, all over the world. I praise God for that internet. I pray the fire and the power uh, that God uh, has uh, even right here with us this morning is going right over that internet and going to touch the people all over the world. I pray that they lost souls out there in this latter day, latter day rains that's going on that's going to be saved, amen, because God is fixing to come back. And you know, you and I need to be a witness uh, to our neighbors uh, out in the community, wherever you might go somebody ask God to, to 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 lead you to somebody maybe that you can win a soul praise God you can tell them about what God did for you you know people can't deny a, a powerful testimony of God about your life and how God changed your life amen they can see it that's supernatural isn't it uh, the, the, looking at your life and what God has done for you, you tell that to somebody about it. You know, some, sometimes people, uh, you can tell them about the scriptures and some of that, and they still might be a little uh, skeptic about it, you know, but you start telling them about your testimony, how God changed your life and made your life more fulfilling. You got purpose in your life uh, and all of that. I'm telling you right now, that changed heart. And when they see the love of Jesus on you, it's going to do something. Amen? It's going to do something. Look at here. School a little bit fuller. <coughs> Excuse me. Say not ye, they are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. I'm here to tell you this morning, the, 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 the harvest is ready. The labors are few, but we as God's children need to do what we can do to win that last soul in. Amen. Because the latter day rain, the harvest is coming. I tell you right now, you know, talk about planting some seed. We got seed out there. It's springtime. You put them tomatoes and corn and peas and stuff in the ground, and guess what? You get a little rain, which we get little, but we got a little bit. Boy, you go out there and look in that garden, them little old peas is popping up. Boy, they coming up. Look out. The corn's popping up. And look on them tomato plants. They little bitty tomatoes coming out, you know. The spring, uh, the rain that God brings, uh, the, the, the fruit is getting ready for the harvest about the middle of uh, this summer. We'll get to harvest some of this stuff that we planted to uh, some of those folks that plant stuff and do things like that. We'll get to get some of the fruit. Well, I'm here to tell you right now, the harvest is ready and it's white for the harvest uh, of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I'm here to tell you, he's coming back. We're in the latter day rain when we get in that latter day rain it uh, waters and then the harvest amen we in it i believe we in it i believe it's fixing to happen at any time and that's exciting look here let's go to verse 36 and he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal uh, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together now i tell you there's a way right there look here now it's not by works lest any man boast it's our belief in the Lord Jesus Christ when we get saved. Amen. But I'm here to tell you, you know, we become a Christian. We got some accountability. We got some responsibility we need to do. What is that? We need to dig in God's word. We need to find out what he wants in our lives. Amen. And if you get in God's word, man, he'll talk to you, ladies and gentlemen. He will talk to you in that word when you start reading that word. And you'll see things uh, that you can't even imagine. He'll show you things. His word is truth. Amen. His word will help you in situations in your life. We talked about it this morning. Uh, you know, miracles. I'm here to tell you right now, if you were somebody in a wheelchair, you was blind, or you was crippled, or you had the bondage of the devil, on you or you had alcoholism on you or some kind of bondage you would want a miracle and be uh, relieved. When you get in God's word and you see God's word where he does all of those miracle things you can bring those before the king. You can bring those scriptures before God and he honors his word folks. He honors it. I could ask in here right now whoever's been healed by God I'd say about everybody in here raise your hand. Amen. Because you know and I know he's touched you praise God. And we need to stand uh, uh, with our brothers and sisters that need miracles in their lives. Amen. We need to uh, present them before the Lord and cry out for them that God will touch them. Amen. God is an awesome God and he loves us. And we have uh, a lot of benefits that he has given us through his precious word. 
Let's go a little bit further right here. He that reapeth, reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit uh, unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. You know, it's a rejoicing thing when you see somebody sold out to the Lord or you are a part of winning somebody to the Lord. Is not that a joyous thing? I tell you right now, I'm just going to give you a little example right here, and I, I'm not, it's not me, it's God. But I remember one time I had a brother-in-law, and I loved him, and him and uh, one of my sisters, they was married for a long time, and they, 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 yeah, they, they got a divorce. And he went his way, and she went his way. And I seen him one day. He got strung out on some stuff, and he got in a bad way, lost his new truck, wrecked it, all kind of stuff going on. And I seen him one day. This has been... 30 years ago, I seen him. I was going to work uh, one morning. I seen him walking uh, on the side of the street. He was going up to the unemployment office, and I seen him. And, man, I whooped my car in there and pulled up beside him. I said, Hub, how you doing, man? What's going on? Well, I'm going up here to the unemployment office. I'm going to try to get me a job. I need a job now. And, and I said, Hub, you've been through a lot. Things is going on in your life. And I started talking to him about the Lord Jesus Christ. And he was at the point in his life he needed something big. And so I started talking to him about Jesus right there on the street. Hallelujah. I'll never forget it. And I, I talked to him more and more about God. And I seen God come on him, you know, and I, 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 I shared the Romans road with him, how to get saved. And you know that man received the Lord Jesus Christ standing right on that uh, street, received the Lord Jesus Christ. And he moved to North Carolina. I didn't see him no more for 10 years. And all of a sudden, Rowan and Jeanette and all of us was over here in the little church, and he popped in one day. He said, Brother Rick, I just want to come in here and tell you. He said, the greatest thing ever happened to me in my life is when you led me to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, I'm still living for the Lord. Oh, God, that touched my heart. Oh, man, it touched my heart. He said, I got to go. I said, well, hub, I love you, man. And he left. About 20 years later, here in the last six months, he come back to Greenville, and he went and seen my mother. And he told my mother the, the testimony that God saved him. And he's a living testimony of it today. He said, the greatest thing that ever happened to me in my life is when I got saved and received the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you think that don't just touch my heart when I see him or when I hear about him or when he comes and I hear people talking about he's living for the Lord. He's still living for the Lord. Amen. We got to endure to the end, y'all. But that touched my heart. I pray in the name of Jesus that each one of you in here this morning will have an opportunity, to, if you've never done it, to lead somebody to God, to win a soul from a hellish, destructive place. I pray God will put the anointing on you. And I want to pray right now something. Bud was telling me something this morning about his friend. <laughs> Bud led him to the Lord. But he's in a bad way right now. He might pass on. I want to just, let's bow our head right now. I want to pray for this man. His name is Jim. Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray you touch Jim right where he's at in the hospital and the tubes in him. I pray, God, uh, uh, that head that's bleeding, God, I pray in the name of Jesus, you heal him, God. But I pray most of all, God, he'll reconfirm his faith. God, you'll send somebody to reconfirm his faith and let him know if he goes or he don't uh, that you're with him in Jesus' name. I pray you'll touch him in Jesus' name. You see, that's another testimony right there. Ain't it? Our brother Bud went to his friend up in Illinois. Hallelujah. And he witnessed to that man and won him to the Lord. See, you don't never know when God's going to use you. You don't never know. Oh, I could stop right here. Amen. Praise God. You know, that's the most important thing we have in here. It's not healings uh, out of the wheelchair and the blind man seeing the crippled man walk. Uh, it's the salvation of the soul, I feel like, is the greatest miracle that God does. Amen? Because it's eternity. Hallelujah. The other was important too, but that's the number one thing we as Christians 
need to look at right here. Look here. He that reapeth, receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both the he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. I'm here to tell you, you win somebody to the Lord and you see them serving the Lord, it'll, it'll excite you. One of a good example I'm going to use this church, Brother Roy and Jeanette preached in the prison for many years and then God told them to go full time and Brother Charles Sellers, he's with the Lord now. Man, he was down there in that prison and they were preaching and he come out of that uh, uh, dorm or everywhere he's at and fell on his knees, uh, uh, Sister Jeanette and Roy, and they led him to the Lord and God moved on that man, got him out of prison, been in prison off and on a long time. He done a lot of stuff, but God forgave him. He got out of prison. When he did, he come to this church. And he started going to the prisons and winning souls. Hallelujah. God might be calling you to go to the prison and win souls or go somewhere else or go to a loved one or something. Just be led of the Lord when you feel that in you. Go. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. But Brother Charles sat right there many years and he was with us many years. Hallelujah. Praise God. Working for the Lord. And it was time for God to bring him on in. And so he's with the Lord now. Amen. That's another great example this morning. Look uh, what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. Let's go a little bit further right here and see uh, what we got. You girls, you girls listening over, ain't you? Thank you. Hallelujah. Look at here. Let's go a little bit further right here and see what God says. Know God in Christ, John 17. Well, here's, here's some more scriptures. 37, I forgot. And here is it that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. Did you know one of you might go and speak to them about Jesus, somebody about Jesus? And guess what? They may not get saved. But you might be the one that planted the seed. Okay? You may be the one that got them stirred in their heart a little bit. And if you did look out, God will send another one in there that may be the one that will reap that seed. Amen. So you don't know sometimes if you're planting or sowing. I could get into a lot of that, uh, but we don't have time this morning. Uh, we'll move right along. I ain't even got to the scripture I want to get to yet. Look at here. Let's look at verse uh, uh, 38 right here. I sent you to reap that whereon you, ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored and ye are entered into their labors. I've experienced that. Other people have labored and I've come into their labor, but I've obeyed God and done what he wants me to do. You need to do the same thing. Maybe you didn't sow, but maybe you're going to, God sent you in there to reap. Amen. Praise God. Let's look a little bit further. I love it. Look here. This is the one I'm getting close to now. Let's look at John 2 and 3. Know God in Christ and have life eternal. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is, uh, this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. The only way is through him, amen? The only way. Now, this one right here, I'm going to probably uh, settle on it a little bit, this one coming up. Well, not this one. Oh, yeah, this one. This is it. Yeah, this is the one I want to spend a little time with, folks. Look at here. The Bible says, enter you the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in therein. I'm here to tell you this morning. Till you get a hold of God and get on that straight gate, you're in a doomed position in your life. You're on a road to total destruction. I'm here to tell you the truth. This is God's word. It says so. It's talking about it. You get in that straight gate uh, and you get in God's word and you follow him, praise God. Uh, you on a road to eternal life with him. Amen. Hallelujah. But you get in that wrong road, that broad road that leads to hell. And the Bible said it leads uh, to destruction. It says so right here that leads to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. I'm here to tell you, as I read and study the Word of God, I see more and more there are going to be more people going to hell than going to heaven. You know why? Because that broad road's out there, and temptation, the devil, and all the things of the world draws God's creation to that destructive thing. If you don't believe it, talk to Noah. Eight souls was saved in that. 
Look at Sodom and Gomorrah, what happened there. God judged because of sin. Amen? And I'm here to tell you again this morning, he's going to judge uh, again. He's coming back. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I praise God for all the Christian brothers and sisters in here this morning. If you don't have Jesus in your heart, please, please get it straight. Because if you don't, you'll be on that broad road. And the Bible said it will lead to total destruction. I'm here to tell you. You might have a few pleasures here in this life that the devil is letting uh, uh, go on in sin, but there come a time, judgment, uh, and that destruction that the Bible talks about will come forth. It will come forth. There's no in between. I'm telling you, boy, I tell you, if I didn't have Jesus in my heart right now, this preacher would be kicking on my shins. I wouldn't be. The Word of God would be. Amen? I tell you right now, Get with him because he loves you so much. He gave his only begotten son. He loves you so much. And he, because of him, has given us the eternal life that we're going to have with him. Is that not exciting? Is that something we can comfort each other with this morning? Amen. I could stay right here uh, the rest uh, of the time on this, uh, these scriptures right here. What's, listen, whatsoever a man soweth, that what is what he's going to reap. And I can speak on this with authority, y'all. Because I know I sowed a lot of bad seed when I was not following God. I ain't perfect today, but I'm striving to be like Jesus. Amen. And he's helping me. Hallelujah. Praise God. But I'm here to tell you uh, this morning, this afternoon, this afternoon now. I'm here to tell you right now, praise God. You sow bad seed. I like that, you know. Uh, it's going to come up. You're going to get a lot more harvest out of your sowing than you sowed. I can tell you that from experience. But I'm here to tell you also this morning, when you start sowing that good seed of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, you're going to start getting the good seed, and it's going to come up, amen. Hallelujah. Think about it, y'all. I'm telling you right now, but whatever, if a man sows bad stuff, he gonna, he's going to reap it. If a man or woman sows uh, good stuff, ooh, you're going to start reaping that too, amen. Hallelujah. It took me a long time for my harvest to swing over to the other side. Because I had planted so much bad stuff. But after a, a long time and the blood of Jesus, praise God, and I got in his word and studied and read and, and got in there where I needed to be, hallelujah, praise God, the good harvest started coming up because I was planting the good seed, just like you are. Amen? Look right here. Enter ye in the straight gate, which for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in uh, thereat. Look at here. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. So that scripture right there tells me that there are going to be more people going to hell than there are going to heaven. But guess what? God didn't want that. It's God's desire that every man and woman be saved. That's what he wants. But guess what he done? He's such an awesome God. He gave you free will to choose where you want to go to hell or you want to go to hell. It's your choice. Nobody else's. It's between you and God. Do you want to go to heaven or you want to go to hell? Do you want to go down that straight, narrow road? Hallelujah. Or you want to go down that broad road? It is your choice. I'm talking about something very serious, folks. I'm telling you, God is an awesome God and he loves you so much. Because straight is the gate, narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life. We're talking about life eternally with our God. And few there be that find it. Look at here. Let's go a little bit uh, further right here. you got to forsake all. Let me tell you about this one right here. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. Did you know when you become a Christian, you got to leave all and you got to follow him? I'm here to tell you right now. I'm just going to tell you. I love my family. But I got some resistance yesterday. Well, you need to spend time with your family. We was down there at my mother. I, I hope they're watching. I love them. I prayed for every one of them this morning. <laughs> Anybody got lost loved ones here? Raise your hand. Oh, yeah. So let me tell you. I, I, you know, I, I was telling them, so, well, me and Beck's got to leave. We had a great little outing with my mother for Mother's Day. It was great, you know. I had a few of them say, listen, you need to spend time with your family too. And I said, I am. But I said, God comes first. God has got to come first in your life. I don't care 
And, you know, there's people that's jealous of that. They don't, they want uh, that part of you. And that's, 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 that's normal. But I'm here to tell you right now, if you're a child of the king, the Bible says you got to forsake all. I got to forsake my children, my wife, and everybody. He's got to be first. Now, if I put him first, guess what? The balance will come down the way it's supposed to be. My wife, my children, loved ones around. Amen. But I'm here right now. God's a jealous God. He's got to be number one. And whatever he tells you to do or whatever you're doing from him, you do it first uh, and foremost. And you forsake. I have forsaken uh, a few things in my life uh, for God. I have. But that's okay. I'm proud of it. I'm going to stand. I'm going to stand. Look at here. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. So somebody's coming at you trying to take you out of your church or trying to do things or get you uh, from uh, serving God or fellowshipping with God or have, spending your time with God. You better not listen to them. You better listen to God. Because he's got to be first in, in your life. That's it. He's got to be number one. Look here. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, there's no man that hath left house, brethren, sister, and father, mother, wife, or children, or lands, for my sake, and the gospel. But he shall receive the hundredfold now in this time, houses, brethren, sisters, and mothers, children, and lands, with persecutions, and then the world to come, eternal life. Hallelujah. Look at the victory right here. Eternal life. I don't care what you do, who you leave, what happens in your life. If you leave it for the Lord thy God, you're going to reap something here. And guess what? We don't do it for that reason. We do it because we love God, because he has done so much for us. Amen? He has done so much for us. That's why we do it. We're here this morning because I love him. Amen? I want a fellowship. I want to be with him. We're with him this morning. He's here. I tell you right now, he's here, y'all. I know he is. You read God's word. God's word's true. He said, where two or three are gathered. Are we gathered in the name of the king? Yes, we are. Hallelujah. We gathered him because of him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's go a little bit further right here. He shall receive a hundredfold. I tell you right now, that's an awesome thing. He's got to be first in your life. Amen. And, uh, you know, you forsake all there. Let's look in Galatians 6, 7, and 8. I could really get into Galatians and look at some of the stuff that's in there. You can see some of the Ten Commandments right in uh, Galatians uh, 9, 6, 9, uh, 5, 19, if you want to see where they're at. <laughs> look here. Let's go a little bit further and look about who, whatsoever man is sowing. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. I'm telling you right now, these people out there are mocking God, doing things they ought not be doing. God's an awesome God. He loves you. But I tell you right now, don't play games with God. It's a serious thing to play games with God. Be not deceived. God is not marked. For whatsoever a man soweth, he shall also reap. You know, people that come in and say, hey, I want to be saved and set free and delivered, he'll certainly do that. People come in in a backslidden a slidden condition say, I want God back. Well, you know, if they sincerely mean that in their heart uh, and they turn from their sin, guess what? God will restore them. He'll restore you this morning. If you've been following God afar off and you're backslidden, he wants uh, you to come back. But you've got to turn for your sin. If you ain't going to turn from it, uh, you, you, you messing with God. You better look out. But if you really want help, he'll certainly give it to you. Look here. Be not deceived. God is not marked for whatsoever a man soweth shall he reap also. He that soweth to the flesh shall uh, 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 of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap. What's that? Life uh, everlasting. What's the message about this morning? Life everlasting. Hallelujah. We got a lot to be proud of this morning, folks. You got him in your heart. Amen. Let's look right here in Titus, and we hope for that eternal. I hope, in hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began. Now, God promised you eternal life. He promised, and if God promised something, guess what? He don't break a promise. How many in here, I ain't going to ask you to raise your hand if I ever broke a promise to God? I raised my hand. Oh, you raised them too. I have broke a promise to God, and I feel really bad, but I am here to tell you, Got on my knees and cried out to God, and he forgave me.
But I'm here to tell you how many promises has God ever broke to you? Not one. Woo! Hallelujah! Glory! He don't break them. That's who he is. Look at here. In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Hallelujah. Believe. You got to do a little something when you become a Christian. You can't just say, yeah, I'm a Christian and walk out them doors. What does the word say? That whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have ever eternal life. There it is again. And look right here. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have what? Everlasting life. There it is again. You can have eternal life by believing on Jesus Christ and God. That's how you get it, y'all. Hallelujah. That's how we got it. Amen. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but uh, that the world through him might be saved. Is that awesome? Is that awesome this morning? Believe. See, we got to believe and obey. Amen. Praise God. And uh, we got to be hearers. We got to be doers of the word too. And this is the key to this right here. Let's look in John 10. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give unto them, what, what, what do they give? Eternal life that they never shall never perish, neither uh, shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Now, I want to tell you right now. Look here in verse 29. My Father which gave them is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Let me tell you something. We got responsibility and accountability to do here. If we hear and be doers of this word Sunday, okay? Just do it Sunday, okay? You got to do it daily, folks. You can't do it Sunday and rock back into work tomorrow or whatever you're doing tomorrow and say, I'm good the next Sunday. Don't work out of way. It's got to be a daily thing with our God. You got to have a relationship with him. You got to be in his word. You get that power in the spirit, man or woman, praise God, and you walk the walk and talk the talk. But if you don't, you won't. <laughs> Bottom line, ain't it? You got to do it daily. Shame on you if you ain't doing it daily. You got some problems. Uh, you're going to be falling back before you know it. Uh, you ain't going to want to come to church on Sunday, Sunday morning, Sunday night, and, and I'm going to be preaching Wednesday night on paradise. You don't want to come hear that, my goodness. But if you doing it daily and walking the walk, talking the talk, man, you'll be excited. I'm coming here. I want to hear about paradise. Amen. I want to hear about God's eternal uh, life, salvation with him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Look at right here. Uh, not only does he hear it, but be doers of the word. Stay in his word daily. Stay with him daily. Amen. In Romans 6, 23, eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let me tell you something. If you've been, if you're in a backslidden condition here this morning and you uh, backslid on God, guess what? Uh, uh, you got the death penalty put back on you. And the only way to get that right is truly repent uh, to God and he'll restore you. That's pretty heavy, isn't it? When you backslide, you get the death penalty put back on you. But when you get it right with God and repent, you think you can follow God and beer in a beer joint and everything's okay, and God comes back and you're in that beer joint, you ain't going. If you're partaking, if you're sinning and doing wrong. But praise God, if you get out of that beer joint, come to the cross and ask God to help you, guess what? You're going because you can be restored. If you truly mean it, stay out. Turn from your sins. Amen. God's got me on that today, hasn't he? You know, we had to clean up our act sometime, folks. Think about it. Uh, it says right here in his precious word, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hebrews 9, 15, the word talks about uh, uh, we got an inheritance, y'all. For this cause, he is the medit uh, uh, mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that we under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Amen. 
Is that a promise of God? Did we just uh, uh, state a while ago that God don't break promises, but we do sometimes? Oh, yeah. I like that. I, pray, I, I, I give God the praise. You know, uh, I, I won't stop right there. I want to tell you something. You can have eternal life by believing on Jesus Christ and God. But I'll tell you right now, those that's the only destructive road out there, you can cancel that destructive road through repentance. I want every head bowed, plead uh, this morning. I want you to be honest with yourself. If you're here this morning and you don't have Jesus Christ or you're in a backslidden condition, I want you to be totally honest with yourself. And you want to get that corrected this morning, I want you to just raise your hand. Real simple. I see that hand. Anybody else? I see that hand. Yes, I do. I'm going to give you a little time. I see that hand. I'm going to give you a little time here right now. If you're not right with the Lord this morning and you know it, I want you to raise your hand. I'm going to pray for you. Anybody else? Every head bowed. I'm talking to the folks on the Internet, too. If anybody there, I see that hand. Yes. Yes, I see that hand. I see that hand. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm fixing to pray. You want in this prayer, raise your hand. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Be honest with yourself. You folks on the internet, I want you to pray this prayer too. If you don't have Lord Jesus Christ or you in a backslidden condition, I want you to pray this prayer with me. I want everybody to pray this prayer with me and all those that raised their hand too. I want everybody to do it. Uh, uh, let's just pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me for my sins. You said if I confess my sins, that you're faithful and just to forgive me of my sins. And cleanse me of all unrighteousness. And God, I confess. God, cleanse me in Jesus' name. Restore me, God. And God, uh, those who don't want to be restored has never been saved. God, save them right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. Now, I want to tell you, I'm going to cut you loose. Anybody need special prayer, you're welcome to come up here. And we'll pray for you. But I want to give God the, uh, the praise and glory for the hands that just went up now. Well, just now. Let's give him the praise. Amen. <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. That's what it's all about. Uh, getting uh, people right with the Lord. Amen. I want to tell you, go on out there and get your chicken and green beans. And I want to tell you, bring somebody back with you tonight. Brother uh, 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 Nathan's going to have the word. The praise and worship is going to be powerful. I'm here to tell you, God is on the